first week. I do these videos uh, about my experience with universal meditations. I do them first and foremost to remember. And in remembering, I'm also moving forward uh, in the process. From this week, uh, one thing I want to remember is that when I imagine that person who has this loving heart and they're over there and I see them and I try to feel what are they feeling, imagining being them. What is it like to be them? And when I do that, when I did that, when I do that, <laughs> um, I see through their eyes. And quite honestly, it isn't much of a change when you begin to see through another's eyes to realize that you are that person. You are having the energies of that person. You are uh, their heart is your heart. Now this was a very expansive feeling for me. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, it ties in with one of uh, David Les's uh, teachings, uh, which have to do with the idea of dominion, that somehow many, all of us have our dominion, our place that we're somehow responsible for, that we, maybe our atmosphere kind of spreads out over it and we're, it could be called a queendom too, or a kingdom, our dominion. Well, as I watch that, watch at that person trying to see what are they doing, you know, I'm imagining looking at them, and in this case she, she's standing there and sort of at her post, you know, in front of her condo, calling out people's names from time to time as they go by, okay? So I'm looking at her and I'm imagining what it's like to be her. And I'm realizing that she is, has assumed a post. And she is actually kind of tall and erect in this post. Uh, and by post, I, I do mean the dominion. Uh, she is at her, her place of, of dominion. And uh, wow, that's, that's quite something. And then this week when I went to uh, Emerson Point, uh, which is just outside of Palmetto, uh, lo and behold, uh, what did I see? Almost as soon as I got there, was a great, great white falcon at the very top of uh, the branches, very erect and poised, looking over his or her dominion. Different beingness but something the same. Another thing I want to remember from this week is that when I imagine myself in that overwhelmingly beautiful place uh, and my heart softens um, and my whole being becomes kind of warm, <laughs> lightful, you know, feeling that feeling then immediately my heart is like um, activated. It's it's uh, it's it becomes uh, alive. Uh, I guess we could softened is the word that was was used, but it it's immediately there, and my concentration is there, all without effort. It's not like I'm concentrating on my heart down right there, heart heart there. No, it's natural. It's just the whole being just centers around that. That well, it's because that's the spot. That's whoa. That's the warm spot. That's that's the ignited spot. That's the spot that's giving off. That's that's home. You know. So I wanted to remember how 
you can sometimes do these other things which cause the concentration to occur without the other way around, where you try to concentrate on that and to make it happen. Instead, you concentrate on something else and boom, your heart awakens. Or, you know, your concentration is there anyway. And the third thing I want to remember from this first week is that David Less has said on other occasions and has said it here too, uh, you know, you have some choices. You can look at it as a feeling or a thought or, you know, you have some choices. And it's, you have more choices than that too. Um, you have the freedom to uh, create some of your own practices as you move along. And having that freedom, it, it opens the space up for creativity. Let me give some examples uh, to remember. Um, well, right from the beginning, day one, uh, I'm trying to imagine this beautiful place of nature and uh, I find myself in front of a pier, you know. Uh, it is in nature and it's a place called Truckee, California. Uh, a retreat I had there. It is a spot, a physical spot, but it's in front of a pier. It's not, it's not in front of, you know, a great sunset or uh, a mountain with the, the snow and the highness of it. At times I'm, I'm tired and um, and maybe this is part of the reason this happens, but sometimes uh, when I'm breathing in light, and then the sending out energy, you know, I open my eyes, you know, it keeps me awake. Somehow it seems to work a lot of times for me. Another time this week I was... Um, mm, breathing out and sending courage to different parts of my being, right? The cells of my being and, you know, feelings and my emotional body and, well, I'm sending courage to my thought place, you know, my mind, my thought, courage to that place. And courage is, is a power, you know, I mean, I, I feel it as a power, courage. So here I am sending courage to my mind and immediately and kindness. Right then it just, you know, just, it was a balancer and I needed it for, as I sent it to my mind. And that was a freedom, a freedom to to do those little adjustments that that help you in your particular way. Another one is at times throughout the day. You know, just a general little opening idea that, you know, at times throughout the day, think of this or feel that or take a break or a pause, you know, at times throughout the day. Well, I'm a little bit fanatical, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm almost I'm almost ready to take what I call the next step, you know, and and so uh, times throughout the day begins to be whenever I'm walking, you know. I mean, not, I mean not every moment when I'm walking, but sometimes when I'm walking, you know, times throughout the day. And so, having initiated this practice with with uh, universal meditations now, now times throughout the day, I start to try to bring in my own kind of practice of some sort. In this case, it's a, it, it's something I, I learned from a, a, from being with Pierre at his retreats. During the retreat, um, there's an atmosphere that's set up and how you, how you stay clean and, you know, how you eat slowly and you move slowly and you don't talk, it's silent, you know, and there's an atmosphere that begins to be generated and, and created in you, around you. And your movements are s smooth, you know. And your posture is a little different. You, you're a little more erect. You're kind of taller, you know. 
and uh, your walk is um, just, it's graceful kind of, you know, it's, uh, it's different. Well, the word, code word that Pierre used about this, and at least it's the one that I picked up and used, is, is head held high. Head held high. Well, I, I wrote about this uh, this week, uh, the characteristics that seem to be a head held high. And it's a walk. It's a walk in which your feet touch the ground, but not the heels, you know. The heels aren't pressing in. Uh, it's more felt in the, the front part of the feet and the toes, you know. Somewhat light, so kind of light, a light of weight, you know, light. Uh, and then the posture is more erect. Head is shoulders back a little more. At least it feels that way. It may not look that way from the outside. It feels that way inside. So your feet feel that way. Your toes, you know, your toes feel that way. And you're more erect. The posture is a little up. Um, and then you get to your head, you know. <laughs> and this is where uh, it's really um, high, you know. Um, and for me, I use the... Uh, the two mouth breaths, um, you know, in and out the mouth, because that's most characteristic for me of the high mountains and the, the blue blue sky. And so I uh, use a mouth to mouth breath and feel that upper regions of of me, you know, and that's the walk head held high. And that's one that I hope to practice and try, you know, throughout the day, several times a day.